In this video, we're setting up Rails 8 with the new basic authentication system. I also include Tailwind CSS, Postgres, Guard for automated test watching, RSpec, and RubyCop. Now let's get started by being on the latest version of Ruby and Rails. So with Ruby, I'm currently on 3.3.6. Now to install Rails, I'll just run gem install Rails. That's finished and we've installed Rails 8.0.0. Now there's a setup guide that you can follow through, but what we've done so far is check the version of Ruby and install the latest version of Rails. What we'll do now is just set up a repository that you can find this code in. Now I'm just over at GitHub on Appy Dave. We'll create a new repository. Inside of this, we'll call it Rails 8 Basic Auth. Now we're going to make it public. And we'll set the license to the Mozilla Public License 2 and a basic description. Let's just create this repository. So the command we're going to start off with is Rails new, Rails 8 basic auth. We're not going to include any test frameworks because we're going to use RSpec. We will include Tailwind CSS and Postgres as the database. Heading over to the terminal, we'll paste in that command and let it do the standard Rails creation process. Now the new application is finishing creating. What we're going to need to do is change into the directory and because we're using Postgres, we'll need to create the database. So let's just cd into the correct folder. We'll clear the screen here and we'll do a Rails DB create. And that should just create the databases, Rails 8 basic auth development and test. Now let's just test whether the server is running. We've got Chrome open. We're starting up the uh, web server and we'll run it and we're running Rails 8 with Rack 3.1.8 and Ruby 3.3.6. Now let's connect this repo up to the repo we've already created on GitHub. So we'll just put this information in right now and then let's just run the add dot commit to the initial request and push it all up. So we'll let that go and that's all moving. And we'll come over to the repo and just refresh and we've got the initial commit. So as we go along, I'll be doing commit along the way and you can go to any section that you like. Now for a little bit of basic setup, we're just gonna make sure that everything that we do is done in a template that you can just run from the command line. So we'll just go and create this file. We've created it, we've touched it, and lastly, we'll also put in the setup documentation that we're reading through at the moment. So this will all be in the repository. Now we have a standard Rails 8 application created with Tailwind CSS and Postgres. Now what I've added is a Rails generator that you can use, and it's just a standard Rails generator with a bunch of steps that we're running through. And as we go through them, they'll just be called by different numbers so that you can cherry pick what you want to do with the generation of this application. I'll just take you through a couple of aliases I've set up. The main one being the R8 next is how we'll go through each capability of the Rails 8 application. And there's also a run command which will run the Rails server with a pre-compile in front of it. So what we'll do is just paste all of this and it's now available. Now we can test that out by typing run and it should just do a standard Rails server with pre-compile. Now let's just quickly look at this template command that we've set up. There's a file, we'll look at it in a moment. Some of the information came from prior documentation that I read a month ago on the pre-releases of Rails 8. But if we go to the top, we're using Rails generators as a base class and then a bunch of classes for each. So what we're going to work through is creating common gems, a home page, we'll do the layout, we'll get some alert messages and also adding an email authentication mailer to the system. Run our little command line tool R8 next, we'll get a menu and we're going to work with number one. What that'll do is add the various gems and start doing a bundle install. There's also a bundle outdated going on and it actually finishes off with a RubyCop 
a so any issues in the code base will be cleaned up. Now let's have a quick look at what's changed. Firstly, if we go to the gem file, we can have a look at the original files that have been added. We've got Rails 8, we've got a Postgres gem. These are the new concepts that I'm going to talk about in a future video around solid cache, queue and a cable. Additionally, it's also added in the information I want for the custom gems. If we look at the aspect file, it's set up with a require spec helper and I like to use the documentation format. If we go into spec, there's a Rails helper and a spec helper already pre-set up and a guard file. And what the guard is watching our Rails application. If we run it, nothing's happening at the moment. Now I'll just label this commit. And what that means is that when you come up to the repo, you should be able to just look through and find the areas that have been changed labeled in the repo. Now that I've got the basic gems set up, I'd like to get a home page going. Now you can see that I'm running a Rails server. It's on port 3001. And if we run R8 next, it will be looking for the template file in the public directory called Rails 8 template. So we'll We'll just run number two. And what that's going to do is create the controller and the home page to get started. So we'll just restart the server with the run command and refresh. And we have Rails 8 basic off. And we can see that there's some um, Tailwind CSS giving it a little bit of styling. Now a quick look at what we've generated is a standard controller called home with index. We're skipping routes because we want to use the root for this. And we can see just a slight modification to the routes and here's the HTML that's going on. So we've got this in place here. A standard view has been created and we've got a couple of specs. So we've got this home helper, we've got a request spec and we've got this view spec. Now I'm going to get rid of the view specs, but request specs we will look at, especially when we're doing the authentication. Now I just bring the terminal into focus. I'm running guard and we'll run the tests and we've got one that's just being skipped and we've got one that's in error. So the one that's being skipped, which is a helper, I'm also going to remove. And let's have a look at the request spec. And you can see here that it's home slash index. Now I've gone and changed the route so that the home index will point to the root. So let's just make sure we change it here and we'll hit save. And now we have a working request spec for the root. Let's now play around with the layout. We'll get a menu in place for the authentication system. We'll also look at alert messages. So we have all this code going on for the different menus that we want to do. We've got a little bit of changes to the layout, especially adding in the menu. And in the next step, we'll work with the flash messages where they'll just use Tailwind CSS to style them. Firstly, run the layout and we'll just see how things change with that. This time for the flash messages, which is number four. And if we come and do a refresh, we can see the layout in place. The flash messages will show up a bit later. One of the things I was encountering is that the asset pre-compilation doesn't happen automatically. And there should be a little bit of styling here. To rerun the web server, it's also going to do the asset pre-compile. And if we do a refresh, we get a new look and feel. Next, I want to generate a few controller pages. But before I do that, I'm going to modify a few of the settings going on here and then we'll add in the pages and the controllers here. I want to generate three top level pages for the authentication system. But before we do that, I would like to play around with the configuration of the generator. So we'll make these changes followed by the generation of the pages. We can firstly do the application settings. We'll restart the generator and we'll do the top level pages number six. And now we've got our pages controller. There's three actions ready to go. If we look in the views, we've got some pages being pre-created for us. We've also got the shared information from the flash messages and the menus that we just created earlier. If we look down at the unit tests, you'll see that it's now only generating the request spec. So if we click on that, there should be three in place ready to go. Let's just head over to the terminal and put in guard and we'll see if these three request specs are running okay. They are. Come over to the web view and we refresh and we can see there's now three pages available. If you see any 
styling issues, just restart the server. I know that this should be a darker color. If we click on them, we should be able to go to the three different pages that we want to test. The next step is to generate the new authentication system that comes with Rails 8. Now we could run step number seven, which would do the Rails generate authentication and update the database. But let's have a look at this manually. So firstly, I'm just gonna run Rails generate authentication. We can see the new files come in. Now notice there's also an update database. If we go and have a look at what that's really doing, it's just a Rails DB migrate and a Rails DB test prepare. So let's run them manually as well. So just running the Rails DB migrate to update the database, the test prepare will make sure that the test database is in sync as well. Heading over to the application, let's have a look at what's changed. So if we go into the database migrations, we can see there's a new table being added called users. It's got an email address and a password digest. After that, we've got the sessions for each time a user signs in with just their IP address. Heading over to the app folder, there's a lot of changes going on here. They will look at the views. We've got the passwords, email and new. There's also a mailer. So when we send out an email for resets, that'll be there. And we've also got the new sessions view going on here. But everything's been done using Tailwind CSS. A simple little mailer has been created for resetting the password. And then we start looking at the data going on with the models. So the first one would be the user. It's got has secure password and has many sessions. It's also down casing the email address. Then after that, we got the session, which is belonging to a user. And if you want to access the current user and session, we've got this current attribute set up with the session and a delegation through to the user. Let's now go have a look at the controller where a lot of extra work is happening in the passwords controller and the session controller. Now you can see on the passwords controller, this allowed unauthenticated access. And if we go to sessions, it's also got the same thing set up for the new and the create action here. And to find that we can go to the application controller where it's including a concept called authentication. And this is a new concern being built here. So the bulk of the code going on for the authentication system can be found in this concern. Now let's go and see how this is affecting the web application. So we've got the authentication concern. It's now included automatically on the application controller and both the home controller and the pages controller have been left the way they are. Now, if we head over to the website and this is what we saw before, if I do a refresh, we now get taken to a sign-in page. Should be happening for everything. So let's start by just putting in a username and password. We haven't registered it yet and we'll see what happens. Now we get to see a valid error message coming up here, but the other good thing is the alert message that we styled with Tailwind CSS earlier is now coming through. I want to relax some of the security. The home and the about page don't need to be locked down. The account page does. And the authentication page should show information about whether the user is signed in or not. So I'm pressing number eight for relax. And we can see there's a change to the home controller and the pages controller. If we do a refresh and the home page now allows us through. Let's go have a look at what's going on in the pages controller. So the home controller has allow unauthenticated access, which is why we were able to get to that page. With the pages controller, we've got this concept of allow unauthenticated access only for two of the particular pages. So Let's just save that and we'll see what happens if we click on the about and the authentication. They're good and we're still locked down for the account. Now the next step is to create a bunch of authentication enhancements, especially registration, the view and links. So what we'll do is we'll find number nine. So let's come and have a look at the changes. If we go into configuration, we can see there's a change to the routes and we didn't look at some of the routes from earlier as well. So we've got the resource, registration, session and passwords in place. We've also got three pages that we added earlier. If we come up to application and look within models, there's a modification 
to the user. So we've now got validation going on on the email address. A new registrations page has been created and a new registration link has been added to the session. So now we'll be able to register a new user. We have the registrations controller. There's a new and a create method here. And if we have a brief look on the application controller, we can see now there's a current user that we can access. So let's test the register. We'll click on here and we'll put in appydave at appydave.com, click register. It has registered successfully. I don't know that we'll be able to sign in yet. Let's just try that. So we appear to be signed in, but we got no information about the user. And I would like to put that on the authentication page. Now to visualize the user, we'll press number 10, which is authentication information. We've got a new page. If we do a refresh, we now have the idea of what the user is, but there's something missing here because you would have noticed that we did register. So to give a little bit of clarity around this authentication model, what we have done is allow unauthenticated access. So it's basically skipping the require action. And we can see that going on here. It's said for for authentication page, we don't need to be authenticated. But that doesn't mean you've got access to the authentication information. And the authentication information we're interested in is here in the current session, which is looking in the session store. So we need to call this resume session. So what we can do is come back here and just say before action, resume session for that particular page. Now we'll hit save on that come back to the authentication details and we'll refresh. Now that user that we registered, appydave at appydave.com is visible. The recompile of the assets has given us the sign out button. Let's see if that's working. We'll click on it. Let's try and sign back in, appydave at appydave.com. We'll click sign in. We'll click on the authentication page and there we have it. Let's now see if we can add email validation to the sign up process. So we'll go to the register user to try with Abby Dave 2. Now, before we run that, we're going to authentication email. What we've done is add a new table to the database. So the main changes are that the confirmation token and confirmed at have been added to the users. And then after that, we've got some extra methods plus the ability to send an email and regenerate a token. Additionally, we've got the registrations controller now has a confirm button on it. We've got a user mailer with the ability to take the email. If we go into routes, we've got letter opener because that's been added via the gem. An important thing to think about is with the configuration, the default URL options, change it to the same port as whatever your web server is running on. So let's go test it out. Now we're back at the registration where we've got Appy Dave 2. We'll click register and it looks like it's come up with an email system. Let's click on this, confirm the account. We are now confirmed. So we should be able to sign in with that. There's now also a check email. If we click on that, that'll take us over to letter opener. Now we don't need to do that because we've already done it using the default viewer. But if we go and click on the authentication page, it won't say that we're signed in just yet. So let's just click on the sign in and we'll put in Abby Dave 2 and we'll do that one more time. Now we can get to the account page, which wasn't available before. If we look at the authentication page, we can see that we're signed in correctly. I'm Happy Dave. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.